Abu Bakr, the Siddiq of this Ummah, he also tastes death. When he died, they went in search for what he had left behind in terms of inheritance. He was the Khalifa, he was the leader of the Muslim world, the gold of the dunya were under his hands. They found he had left behind a mule and two garments. He said, shroud me with one of the garments and send the other and the mule to Umar ibn al-Khattab and say to him, Ya Umar, O Umar, ittaqillah, fi Allah, for you will encounter death, the like which I am experiencing. When the mule and garment reached Umar, he sat weeping, then said, you have made it a difficult task on those Khalifas, on those leaders that will succeed you, O Abu Bakr. Ibn al-Qayyim and others from amongst the Muslim scholars have mentioned that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he used to go out every morning with the rising of the sun to a tent on the outskirts of Medina. He walks in on one of those under his care, an old and blind woman. He would sweep the floor of her home cook her food and milk her cattle. When he would finish, he would return to his home. Omar began to say to himself, where is that Abu Bakr going? Where does he go every morning? One day after Abu Bakr leaves the tent, Omar enters the tent and he says, who are you? And then the response comes, I am a blind, poor and destitute woman. My husband died some time ago and I don't have anyone to help me after Allah except this man who comes to my service. He said, do you know him? She said, Wallahi, by Allah, I don't know him. What does he do? Umar said, he sweeps my floor, he cooks my meals and he milks my cattle. So he sat and he wept. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower him with his peace, his blessings and his bounties. And what about the death and demise of the Farooq of this Ummah, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu wa arda. One night, he sees a dream. He sees a turkey pecking at him three times. So he asks those versed in dream interpretation about this, who tell him a foreign man will kill you. Actually, prior to Umar's dream, the one who does not speak through whim, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prophesizes the martyrdom of Umar. I am referring to the incident found in Sahih Bukhari, whereby the Prophet, peace be upon him, along with Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar ibn al-Khattab, and Uthman ibn Affan climbed Mount Uhud, a mammoth mountain situated on the outskirts of Medina. This enormous mountain began to shake. So Allah's Messenger, hit it with his noble foot and he addresses the mountain commanding it to be firm he says Uthbut Uhud fa inna alayka nabiyan wa siddiqan wa shahidan be firm O Uhud for on you there stands no more than a prophet a siddiq and two martyrs end of hadith as for the prophet this is prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Siddiq is Abu Bakr, the truthful one. And the two Shaheeds, the two martyrs are Umar and Uthman. May Allah be pleased with them both who were assassinated. After hearing about his fate, Umar submits himself to Allah. And one day while he is leading the people in Fajr prayer, he is stabbed by Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him what he deserves. He drops to his death in the best of places and during the most blessed of obligatory actions. Abu Lu'lu Afli stabbing people left and right, killing seven and injuring another six. They carry him on the shoulders while he is saying, Have I prayed the Fajr? Have I prayed the Fajr Salat? They say no, then he faints. When they place his head on a pillow, he says, Take the pillow away from beneath my head and place my head on the dirt for perhaps Allah will have mercy upon me. 
May Allah shower him with his peace, blessings and bounties. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. He comes forward and he says to Umar, Assalamu alayka ya Amir al mumineen Peace be to you, O leader of the believers. Umar cuts him short and he says, I am no longer the Amir. The Umar cuts him short and he says, Umar cuts him short and he says, I am no longer the Amir, the leader of the believers. As of today, I am considered from amongst the people of the hereafter. So Ibn Abbas says, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Hafs. Wallahi, you became a Muslim and your Islam brought about victory. You migrated and your migration led to conquest. You were appointed as a leader and your leadership was just. During the pangs of death, Ali radiallahu anhu wa arda, may Allah be pleased with him. He says to him some words of praise. He says, I used to frequently hear the messenger of Allah saying, I came with Abu Bakr and Umar. I entered with Abu Bakr and Umar and I went out with Abu Bakr and Umar. We asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite you with your two companions. Brothers and sisters in Islam, these men and many of our pious predecessors, they prepared themselves for the hour of death. They prepared years for it. Ali radiallahu anhu used to say as we read in Sahih Bukhari, he said, be from amongst the children of the hereafter and do not be from amongst the children of the dunya for today is work and no accountability and tomorrow is accountability and no work. No, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this short life, it's not about eating and drinking. It's not about play. It's not about following the desires that lead to sinful actions. It's not about listening to music. It's not about wasting time. When Mu'adh ibn Jabal was on his deathbed, he says, Oh Allah, you know that I didn't like the dunya for the sake of planting trees and not because of its flowing rivers and not for the building of dwellings or the building of mansions. He said, I love this life for three things, for fasting the hot days, for standing up in night prayers and for sitting knee to knee at the feet of the scholars in the circles of knowledge. So far, we have heard about the examples of those who died with good endings. What about those who died with an evil end? It is reported that a Muslim captive was ordered to serve two priests and he had memorized from the Quran. Whenever he used to recite, the hearts of these two non-Muslims would be touched and they would cry. And so they reverted to Islam and the Muslim converted to Christianity. They told him to turn back to Islam. Go back to your former religion. That is better for you. He did not revert and so he died a Christian. We seek refuge with Allah from such an evil end. Most likely my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, his problem is like that of many of the Muslims of today. And that is a lack of Iman, a lack of faith not possessing a proper understanding of Islamic monotheism, of Tawheed, not knowing Allah. The companions, they used to say, تَعَلَّمْنَا الْإِيمَانَ ثُمَّ تَعَلَّمْنَا الْقُرْآنَ فَزِدْنَا بِهِ إِيمَانًا We acquired knowledge about Iman. Then we studied the Quran, which in turn increased our Iman. That is because if a person's knowledge about the tenets of Iman, about the pillars of Iman is poor, then when he or she comes to read the Quran, they may misinterpret or disbelieve in something that they may read.